Hi everyone, my name is Charlie. I am the camp director and the outdoor program manager for the Girl Scouts of New Mexico Trails. I just wanna make this quick video to walk you through the paperwork, what's needed, what it looks like, and most importantly, when to turn it in. Um, I will be sharing my screen, and then that way you'll be able to see where all the paperwork is located on the website. Um, once you register for camp, the paperwork will also be emailed to you. And then I'll repeat this several times, but your paperwork must be returned in PDF form no later than two weeks before your camper's session. Okay, say it a lot, don't worry. Um, we tried to do this last year, but it was our first year with online paperwork, so it was a little bit jumbled. Um, and we know that not everybody got the deadline, so we're going to try very, very hard to meet that deadline this year. If you are having trouble at any point accessing the paperwork, turning the paperwork in, anything like that, please call the main line 505-343-1040 or email our customer here email customercare at nmgirlscouts.org. So let's start the screen share. Excellent. So you can see here we have our Girl Scouts of New Mexico Trails website nmgirlscouts.org. Once you get here, you're going to navigate to the tab that says camp. Just click it. You don't have to go to our camps. And here we have our 2022 summer camp landing page. You'll be able to see all of the information about the different sessions. Um, and we're gonna start here with our day camp paperwork. So for day camp, you will need to turn in the same, the same paperwork as you do for resident camp, um, but you only do it once um, for each session. So you do have to turn it in for each session. So you have your day camper guide, which you which tells you all of the information that you need to know about check-in and check-out, your packing list, things like that. The health history form. If your camper is bringing prescribed medication, over-the-counter medication, or vitamins or tinctures, then you need to fill out this form. This gives us authorization as camp staff to administer that medication to your camper. The code of conduct form, which was current, which was previously called the camper contract. Um, we've just updated it so that it's specific to all GSNMT programs, your minor checkout form, which lets you pick them up in the afternoon, and the get to know your camper form, which helps the counselors know a little bit more about your camper. So I'm going to open these in another tab, but we're not going to go through all of them right now. Then once you scroll past all of the information for resident camp, it starts with Camp Elliot Barker. There's Rancho Del Chaparral. If you are going to a horse camp, please make sure that you read our notes about horse camp. We have our camp FAQ, which has been updated. You can read through that, as well as our updated COVID FAQ um, for anything that's different from this year versus last year for COVID protocols. If you scroll all the way down here, we've got resident and weekend camp four open that up and it gives you a little bulleted list of what is required. So like I said, for resident camp and day camp, it's the same forms. There's your guide that gives you all of your information. Make sure you read through that very thoroughly. Health history form, authorization to administer medication form. Again, vitamins and tinctures should still go on the authorization to administer medication form. Code of conduct, checkout form and get to know your camper. For weekend camp, it's a little bit different. Um, you will still need to complete forms for every single person, um, but for the health history form, since that one's different, um, for the health history form, you can use the health history form that you use for your regular troop meetings and outings. So it's just the regular two page form, um, which we'll see when we go through the actual forms themselves. And then every single person who is attending youth or adult does have to fill out a code of conduct form. If you have somebody who is a parent who is attending with their child, their signature on the code of conduct for their child will count towards theirs. But if you have any parents or adults who are not coming with a child, like their child is not in the group, then they need to fill out their own form. So that's where you can find the forms on the website and then we'll go through them really quickly. We were able to make them fillable PDFs for this summer. I'm gonna open these up too, move that over there. So first we'll look at the health history forms. So for day camp and for weekend camp, it's the two page health history form. Um, so this probably looks really familiar. If you're in a troop, you've probably filled this out at the beginning of the troop year, things like that. Um, do make sure to review these and make sure that they are up to date. 
like I said, they're all fillable. You can fill them in or write online and then just save a copy and attach it to an email. If there's anything that you need to include additional information on, do feel free to include additional pages. You can just type them up in a Word document, save that Word document as a PDF. Um, it's either under Save As or as Export. Um, it's on all Word and open source Word associated um, programs. This form, this part of the form right here tells us what medications we can give that we have on hand um, as designated first eaters or otherwise to be able to give to people in an, either an emergency or a, or a semi-emergency. So maybe they're at camp and they have a headache. Um, we can give them children's Tylenol or regular Tylenol. If they have a rash, we can put some talcum powder on there or we can apply a Benadryl cream, either the kind with diphenhydramine or the kind that's just the cooling cream um, and things like that. So if there's anything that we can give, you check the box. If we can't give it, do not check the box. And then of course, permission to participate is the very last one. And then for resident camp, this form is the longer form. So you will have to fill out a new form if your child is coming to resident camp. Our suggestion is that you fill out one form at the beginning of the summer. And if they're coming to multiple camps, you can just save the one form and send it multiple times. So you don't have to fill out a new form every single time. We do have all the information again, everything is fillable. just scroll through it real quick. If you don't have information like doctor's information, you can leave that blank. Um, and then we'll just, if, which it happens very rarely, knock on wood, um, we do have to take them to the doctor for any reason. It, they'll just use generic information. We have allergies. If there's no checkbox here for no known allergies for you to check. So if there are no allergies, just leave it blank. And this is allergies to medication, allergies to food, pet, anything like that. Um, most importantly to know is that they're allergic to any kind of medication, um, if they have a net allergy, if the net allergy is airborne, um, and if they're anything uh, allergic to anything that's touch, like latex or anything like that, uh, specific sunscreens, that kind of thing. We have updated, so this was updated last year for 2021, um, the immunization. So if your child has received their COVID-19 vaccine, there's only one spot to put it in here, um, but you can either type real small, or if you are more comfortable, you can also just attach their shot record. Um, and so you can write in here or leave this blank and then make sure that their shot record as a PDF is attached to the email when you send it, if you don't want to copy all of the dates in. For special dietary restrictions, um, this is specifically for things that people cannot eat or do not eat. Um, we understand that sometimes kids are picky eaters and we do our best to make accommodations for them, um, but we do serve meals family style, so everybody does eat the same meal unless they have a restriction or an allergy. This is similar to the other form where it was asking uh, about if there's anything that your child needs that's a uh, physical accommodation or if they've been sick recently. Um, this has been updated recently to be a little bit more comprehensive um, and compact. So do make sure you review this again. And if you check yes on any of these boxes, then you need to make sure and you fill in down here at the bottom a little bit of an explanation. It does not have to go into detail. Um, so you can say like, if I check yes for asthma, I'm gonna put the number 22. So you can see which one it's associated with. And I'm going to put only after exercise. That's the only time that I feel, get that asthmatic breathing. So that's how you would do this part of the form. Basic medical treatment is the same one as before, where these are over-the-counter medications that we keep on hand that our health supervisor um, on-site at camp will be able to administer. And if there is something that you do not want us to give to your camper, make sure you do not check the box. So you only have the option to check or uncheck, um, not a yes or a no. And of course, very last page is the important signatures. This is the authorization for them to be able to actually do activities at camp. Uh, so make sure that you, the adult, 18 and over, initial in each of these boxes, and then sign and print your name as well as their name. 
And that's it for the two health forms. So the authorization to administer medication, again, this is prescribed medications, over-the-counter medications, vitamins, tinctures, uh, melatonin, anything like that that they will be taking um, at camp. So you put their name, which camp property they're going to be at, and then fill in the information for the medication. These uh, two days of the week and prescribed or non-prescribed um, don't have fill-ins, unfortunately, um, but you can write notes about them if you need to here, or you can also print this form um, and fill it out by hand. And then just when you upload it back to the computer, if you scan it, obviously it'll scan as a PDF. Um, if you take a picture, you can actually go to convert to pdf.com, put the picture in, it's just a website, um, and it will automatically turn it into a PDF for you for free. And then this is for the adult, print, sign, date complete, and then we'll fill in additional notes um, during check-in when you bring your camper to camp. Here is the code of conduct. Again, this used to be called the camper contract. We just updated the name so that it's applicable to all GSNMT programs and not just camp. Um, pretty much the same thing as always. They're going to follow the rules. They're going to listen to their counselors. They're going to be respectful. They're going to follow the promise in the law. And then the adult and the youth will initial together as they read through these. And if you need to, you know, to talk about them with your camper. Uh, make sure you do this before you come to camp, obviously, since these are due two weeks before, but make sure that you do talk through these with your camper. And then the camper will print and sign and the caregiver will print and sign. So the program checkout form is one of the most important forms. Um, if we do not have a checkout form, we cannot release your camper from camp. Um, so you need to put their name their legal name, so their full first name and their full last name as it appears on all other registration forms. The date that they're attending camp, obviously for all resident camps, you'll check yes for overnight camp. Um, and then you'll put the name of their program, which will be something like Agent Green, um, Giddy Up, Night Owls. Um, and then if you know what session it is, so like, is it week one? Is it week two? Um, you can put that in there as well. But most importantly is the name of the program. Then here, you will put in the names of at least three, um, but up to five. And if you want more room, you can put more on the back. Uh, the names and the phone numbers for other people who are authorized to pick up your camper. This can be family members, friends. If you're carpooling, make sure you put the other carpool adults names on here um, and they will camper will only be released to these people with a photo ID. So you have to bring a photo ID to check out for day camp or resident camp. This form is not required for weekend camp since you're coming with the with the adults. Um, but this is required and they have to have an ID with them when they come to pick up. And then of course um, to make sure that you're on the list, the person who's filling out this form, you put your name, your signature and the dates. And then obviously here, big highlight, do not complete this part of the form. It's not made fillable, so don't try and complete it. Um, this is where they will sign when they pick up the camper. And then we keep this portion of the form and that goes into our records for the camp. The get to know your camper form. So this form goes to their direct counselor. So their direct caregivers while they're at camp, whether that's day camp or resident camp. And it just lets us get to know the campers a little bit better in case there's anything that comes up. Um, Cause being in camp, whether it's your first time or your 10th time can always be a little bit jarring cause it's so much different than being at home. So we ask a couple of questions like, is it gonna be their birthday while they're at camp so that we can do something special for them? Um, and also if your child has their birthday while they're at camp, but you do not celebrate birthdays um, as part of your religion or culture, do please make a note of that. Um, and then who the custodial caretaker is, do they sleepwalk, do they wet the bed, have they ever stayed away from home before, um, and then here you have a yes or a no, and then this is where you would fill out, there's a little drop down menu, um, about what either their most recent or their most common way of sleeping from home is. And then how do they feel about camp, and then we ask a couple of fill in the fill in the questions. Do they have any fears, whether they are ones that they would experience while at camp or ones you don't know if they would experience at camp? Um, any other homesickness or adjustment concerns? Anything, especially if there's anything that's happened recently, so like maybe they have 
only been doing school from home and so they haven't really been socialized with other kids in the last year and a half or anything like that. And then some things you hope that they'll gain. Most often people will put confidence in new friends, um, but it can also be specific skills or if you're looking for them to earn a specific badge. We can't guarantee specific badges if it's not associated with the program, but we can definitely look into it. And then what are some things to do when your child gets overwhelmed or excited to calm them down? And this is really just, um, it's not for if your child gets overly excited or overwhelmed. Um, I mean, it is, it is for that, but it's also for anybody who like, Maybe if your kid has started experiencing these new emotions or even just what you do to kind of like wind down at home at the end of the day, especially for younger campers, that really helps us out a lot um, for helping get them ready for bed and that kind of thing. And then if there's anything else that you would like to um, share with us about your camper and their comfort level while at camp. And then last we have our guides. We're gonna do the day camp guide first. So these all look pretty similar. They just have different names and they all have a table of contents, a little welcome message, and then all of the information that follows. We're not gonna go through all of the camper guides because you will receive this after you register, um, but they do include tips and tricks as well as more information on the forums, which is the same information we went over, um, but it's just reiterating that, you know, they have to be PDF form. It has to be two weeks before the program date. If you're having trouble, email customer care. And then again, about medications. Medications do have to come in the original bottle, whether that's melatonin or a prescribed medication, or if they bring Excedrin to camp for migraines, um, it needs to be in the original manufacturer's bottle with the camper's name on it. If it does not have that, we cannot accept it, unfortunately. We do have things like Excedrin and Ibuprofen over the counter that we can give instead. Um, we do not keep melatonin on hand. So if your camper does take that before bed, um, make sure that that comes in the manufacturer's bottle with your camper's first and last name on it. There's the information about check-in and check-out. This provides all of the times. Um, your driving directions will be emailed separately but it is important that you follow the specific driving directions that you are given for resident camp, Camp Elliot Barker and Rancho del Chaparral so that you end up at the right place. There are two gates to camp. We have our front main gate and our back gate. The back gate remains locked at all times. Um, so you will not be able to get in at the back gate. So you have to follow the given driving directions to make sure that you end up at the front gate, the main gate, so that you can get into camp um, within the time frame for check-in and check-out. Um, we have some general odds and ends. And then of course, at the end is the packing list. The packing list is available as a separate standalone PDF if you need that. You just email customer care and say, hey, I need the day camp packing list. I need the resident camp packing list. I need the weekend camp packing list. Um, and somebody will be able to provide that for you. And so we're just gonna, so that was that for day camp. And then we're just gonna quickly go through the summer one. Pretty much the same thing. This obviously has more information in it because um, there's a little bit more information that you need to know for resident camp. Sorry if this makes anybody sick with the scrolling. Again, about the forms, how to send mail is in here, because um, we don't have mailboxes at the camps. Um, you just drop off the mail when you check in. Again, about check-in and check-out. We have an example of what the schedule might look like and some exciting activities that everybody gets to participate in every week. And then we've got packing tips for summer camp. And then our packing list. So this packing list is two pages because they will need more. Um, and just our main biggest suggestion for packing is that you label everything with your camper's name in case it does end up in the lost and found. Um, and that you have your camper with you no matter their age when you're packing. So obviously if they're old enough, they can pack for themselves. You can just provide them with the packing list and they can pack what they need. Um, but if they're younger and you're helping them pack, it's really important for them to know where their items are in their luggage or their suitcase. This is because we have had, um, one of the biggest triggers of homesickness is not having the things that they have at home. And so when they can't find something like their toothbrush or their book or their pillow, um, cause they don't know where it is in their bag and they're too nervous um, or anxious 
to go through everything on their own and they maybe don't ask for help, um, it can make them really homesick. And so then it just helps if, I, if they know where everything is and where to get to it in their bags. And that's part of, that's in the packing tips as well. So we have clothes, their aid essentials, health and safety, sleeping items. If they're coming to a horse camp, specific things for horse camp. And then of course, um, optional items and items to leave at home as well. And then for the weekend camp, this one is the biggest packet, but it's not because of extra information that you need to know about camp. It's got extra information about all of the activities that you can sign up for. So it's very important to um, take, oh, I have an error, to take the activity instructions, information, here we go, activity selections. Um, and you can print just these pages or you can pull them out and email them to the different people who are going to be coming to troop camp with you if you're doing a troop camp um, so that everybody knows what their activity options are. You will then vote on the activity selections and submit your activity selections online two weeks prior to the date of your camp. Um, I think it actually says 10 days. So it's 10 days. And if you don't get them in within that time frame, you'll be given a generic schedule, but you might not get all the activities you necessarily wanted to do. There is information about the activity selections in general, and then it's separated by camp. So Rancho first and then Barker comes second. And it tells you what the name of the activity is, how many activity blocks it takes up, which is information that's up here, what ages are allowed, if there's any requirements or special equipment, so for this one, you need ankle length pants, a t-shirt, so no tank tops, um, and that's required for all participants that come to the barn, not just the people who are participating in the activity. And then a description about the activity and if there's a maximum number of participants allowed. So this is important if you're bringing a really, really big troop to camp, um, you might want to split your group into two within yourselves. So you can say maybe your troop 10781, um, and you have 20 people going and four adults, so 20 girls and four adults. And so what you'll do when you do your activity selections is you'll select troop 107811A and troop 107811B. And you will have designated which adults and which campers are with each of those groups. And then they can do different activities um, based on the maximums that are allowed. And so there are several pages of activity selections. There are ones that are different between the two camps. So there are some that are offered at Rancho that are not offered at Barker and vice versa. You can see some of them don't have any max at all. And some of them have ages that it's open to all, but it's suggested for juniors and up. And this is generally because of the dexterity or the amount of concentration that is required. Um, and we know it's a lot harder for the daisies and the brownies to really sit still for a long time. Um, and these are less active activities or ones that require a little bit more um, dexterity with their hands. Try not to scroll too fast because I don't wanna make anybody sick. And then at the very bottom of the activity selections is the links. Um, so if you are looking at this as a PDF, you can click on them and it will take you straight to the activity selection. So once y'all know what you wanna do for your activities, you will come in here and fill out the information. There is one for Rancho and one for Barker and they're for any weekend camp, so troop or family camp. And you'll just fill in the email. This should be the email that is associated with the registration for your camp. And then of course, um, which dates it is going to be. So we're gonna put in my email so we can go through this real quick. And I'm just gonna do troop camp. Excellent. So this is where you'll put in, so 107811A or B um, or whatever, however you wanna do that. I'll make sure I fix that error. And then you're going to choose your top activities. So it says, choose your top 10. 
And you can see here that it goes one through eight. Um, and that's because there is this little slidey bar down here at the bottom. So if I slide it all the way over, there's 10. Um, and then you will choose just your top 10. So if there's something that you don't want, you don't select anything in that row. So there's no selection for that. You only choose 10. So say my most want to do is a nature scavenger hunt, and then we want to meet the horses, hike to the mystery tree, do some arts and crafts, we want to earn our birding patch, do some songs and skits. We want to learn how to put up some shelters and do a service project. And then we want to tie dye and we want to do the fossil hill hike. So you'll fill in all 10 of those. If you have a suggestion, you can put your suggestion here. If you have any medical or dietary restrictions that we need to know that you haven't um, let us know about yet, you just hit yes or no. And then you get to rate your sleeping areas as well. So you can choose your most preferred or you can just say no preference. So we don't really care where we stay, um, or the Hogans or the tents. And then there's that. And then if you're coming with another troop, you let us know, or you can just say no. And then you hit submit. And then that's it. So your response has been recorded. Um, you should also receive a copy of your response to your email. If you don't receive a copy of your response to your email, um, you can email customer care and request a copy of your responses as well. And then of course, if you're going to do another one at the same time, you just hit submit another response and it takes you right back to the beginning. Excellent. So that's it about the camp forms and the paperwork and any other sort of links that you might need to be expecting to see when you register for summer camp for 2022. Uh, we're so excited for everybody to be coming to camp this summer and we can't wait to see you.